Driving lights are an essential part of any four-wheel drive rig, but there are so many myths and different things to consider when buying driving lights that makes it hard to decide which best suit your needs. So today, we're gonna to bust a few of those myths. We're gonna show you what you need to pick the right driving light for your vehicle. And also stay tuned in this video because we're gonna give away a set of driving lights to one lucky winner. Now let's dive right into it. Myth one, driving lights have to be round. Now the first big misconception when it comes to spotties is they need to be round in order to be bright. Now that's not exactly the case with LED technology. If we go back in time a little bit, you'd probably realise spotties like these on your old man's truck. Now they're old halogen lights. Now in that case, they had one globe in there and the whole outside was a reflector and they tried to get as bright as they could with a limited technology. Now these were great back in the day, but technology's gone a long way. Have a close look at these LEDs and reflectors. You can basically think of each little LED as a mini halogen light, with a light source in the middle and a little reflector around the outside. But since these LEDs are much smaller, you need a bunch of them to get the same or even better performance than a halogen light. Depending on the strength and the way these are designed, these LEDs can be arranged into whatever shape driving light you want. You can have some crazy lights like my new ones, rectangular ones, which look awesome on modern four-wheel drives, classic round driving lights, or even a light bar, which can light up as much on the road as some spotties can. And the individual LEDs can be designed as spot reflectors for distance or flood reflectors for spread, meaning you can have as much spread or distance as you like. I'm gonna do a little demonstration here to show you how far these lights go on their own. Do a little bit of a comparison between my light bar and my spotties. So up in front, I've got a stretch of road about 800 meters before the next bend. Now the first set I'm gonna chuck on are the driving lights. Now these are the Steady Type X Sports. Now that's very impressive. You can see the whole road up there. Pretty darn good. Now I'm gonna turn those off. Next up, I'm gonna chuck on the old ST4K. It's a 50 inch light bar on the roof. Now. Have a go at that. I think that is really, really impressive. Now, obviously, the Evos would blow it away in terms of distance. It's a high-end light, but there's a lot of distance out of that light bar. And me, for one, I've always been under the impression you don't get distance out of light bars. They're only good for seeing what's on the side of the road, but this one does both. You can see what's on the side of the road, and you can see 800 meters down that stretch. So let us know in the comments below. Has that surprised you? It sure as heck surprised me. And keep in mind that both of these driving lights we tested aren't round. It really goes to show that spotties these days can come in a variety of different shapes. Myth two, you need lights with the longest distance possible. There's a lot of light manufacturers out there who basically market their lights by how much you can see at a certain distance down the road. Now it's all well and good if they claim you can see a kangaroo five kilometers down the road, but I know for me, I can't see a kangaroo five kilometers down the road even in the middle of the day. I mean, no one can, and no one really needs to either. You see, the distance that light manufacturers claim is only half the story, it's not everything. It depends on what kind of driving you do. So while a truckie on the Nullarbor needs good distance, if you're in the mountains or even just on the highway, a well-lit 500 meters might be all you need. And this is why having spread and spot beams is just so important, because it's not just about what's on the road, it's also about what's on the side of it too. So previously we explained how the different characteristics of reflectors can change the characteristics of the light. What I mean by that, you can get a spread and also a spot beam. Now, what I've actually done is loosen my light so I can demonstrate this, because when you get a combination of both, your whole driving experience changes. Now, I've got my spotlight shooting down the road the way it should. This one here is actually loosened and pointing down at the ground. Now, I want you to turn around and just have a look at exactly what I can see. That's with the spotlight pointing down the road. Now, look what happens when I get the spread into the picture. You can see here as I lift up the flood beam, there's a lot more light on the side of the road. So you can see things like a big kangaroo that's planning to make a road crossing. If your spotty's only lit up the road directly in front of you, you might not be able to see him jump across until it's too late. Having a combination of distance and spread with your spotties makes a huge difference during nighttime driving. Myth three, comparable LED lights are equal in quality. No, just because it's got a nice label doesn't mean it's a good quality light. And I'll tell you why. Something you might not know about LEDs, and particularly how they're made, is when a batch of LEDs are made, the quality of them aren't all exactly the same. So what happens is they're actually graded. So imagine this pile of nuts and bolts here, are a bunch of LEDs that are fresh off the production line. Now what they're gonna do is grab the best quality ones. Now they're grade A ones. They're gonna go into one bucket there. So all the grade A ones go into one. Then you've got the secondary ones, which are grade B ones. Now, they're a bit rustier bolts. They're gonna go into here. And then for the lowest graded LEDs, we're gonna call them C grade LEDs. They're gonna go in the third bin. And they'll actually go through, and some of the LEDs won't even work to that bad. They're gonna literally get discarded into the bin. 
So it's only the light manufacturers that specify they want the A-grade quality spotlights. The A-grade ones go to them, and you can imagine where B and C go. That's usually your eBay specials and your very low quality LED lights. A low grade spot is actually gonna shine a fair bit of light, but the problem is the reflectors are cheap, the LEDs are cheap, they're not gonna go the distance and you're gonna get light in every single which way. So when you're actually behind the wheel, those sort of lights, while they are bright, it can be a bit of a nuisance on the road. And a high quality light, of course, is gonna shine exactly where it needs to, it's gonna have the right color temperature and overall have a better driving experience. It's a bit like taking a race car and putting higher octane fuel in it. The tank, of course, is the same size, you're putting the same amount of fuel in, but at the end of the day, that higher octane fuel is gonna give you way more performance. Now, it would be near impossible to try and compare high-end LEDs with lower-grade LEDs just by visually looking at it. So you need some sort of reference. The key thing you're looking for when trying to compare good quality LEDs and low quality ones is something we refer to as CRI. That stands for Color Rendering Index. What that basically means is it's a percentage of the accuracy of color an object is when you shine a light over it. When you're looking at CRI, you get a scale out of zero to 100. Now 100 of course being the best, the sun is 100 because all the colors you see are accurate, they're vivid and obviously quite easy to see. Believe it or not, halogen lights, so these dirty old halogens have a score of 100 as well. While they don't have the best performance, you get really good color out of them. Now a really good quality LED light like this one will have a score somewhere between 90 out of 100, which is pretty darn good because your naked eye can't really tell the difference between 90 and 100, but a lower grade LED will have a score of around 50, and that you can definitely tell. Without good color definition, you can't tell objects apart or judge the distance between them. Imagine being on the highway in Central Australia with all the red dirt around you and a big roo jumps out because the kangaroo will blend in. Without a good CRI, you're not gonna see him until it's too late, no matter how bright your lights are. So it's not color temperature or brightness that leads to eye strain. It's the accuracy of the color you're seeing. And you can only get that with good quality lights. All right, I know you're gonna love this time of the show. It is competition time, and I'm lucky enough to give away a brand new set of Steady Type X Evos, exactly like a run in here on the big 200. Now, you'll be one of the first people in Australia sporting these lights, and all you have to do is write in the comments below, why do you need a new set of spotties? I can't wait to hear your answers. I'm gonna go through all those answers and I'm gonna be picking one winner. Now, I'm actually gonna to reply to your comments. So whatever you do, make sure you've turned the notifications on. That's the only way you're gonna know if I've replied to your comment and you've won a set of these brand new Steady Evos. Good luck. Myth four, good lights cost a fortune and all cheap lights are bad. So at this stage of the video, we've learned that you can really judge a good quality light on two main things. That is the LED quality and of course, how it's built, it's gotta be nice and tough. Now, if you don't have a thousand bucks to spend on a light, don't worry, because you can get cheaper options. Just make sure you look at these things. Four-wheel drive spotties cop an absolute beating, baking in the sun all day, getting wet and covered in mud, even smacked around by branches if you're not careful. So when it comes to build quality of your light, here's what you need to look for. Now, these are the same lights I've got on Sooty, and it might not come as a surprise to you guys, but any product I keep on my four-wheel drive needs to be tough because I subject these vehicles to the absolute harshest terrains known to man. Now, here's what you need to look for. Make sure the body of the light is nice and tough. This one's cast aluminium, so you know it's nice and tough. The mounts are really strong on it. It's a heavy light and it weighs quite a bit too. Even the bolts need to be good quality because at the end of the day, the light needs to be completely sealed. Check that it's IP68 rated, just like this one here. That means it can go under three meters of water. Now, heck, I mean, if Sooty goes under three meters of water, the last thing I'm worried about is my lights, but it's good to know that they're sealed because even just driving with lots of rain, you're gonna get dust, water, ingress, and of course, once you get a bit of water in those lights, they're not gonna last. So make sure they're IP rated and really sturdy, and that way you'll get a nice tough light. LEDs don't get as hot as halogen bulbs, but they still need to stay cool if you want them to last. Good housings will be weighty, with thick fins on the back for maximum cooling. Cheaper lights will feel lighter and get hotter. Because just like anything else, heat will kill LEDs. Now this one here, I've been running these for about an hour. 38.4 at the hottest spot at the back of the light. That's not too bad. Cheaper spotties will run so much hotter, so wear out much quicker. Cheaper spotties may cost less, but you'll be buying one just about every month because they simply don't last. And speaking of durability, you've also got to look at the lens quality of spotties because while the LEDs themselves might be good, if the lens is in front of them at poor quality, the light output is going to suffer. Lights like these Steady Type Xs have high quality lenses, allowing light from the LEDs to easily pass through them without much interference. 
They're made of three mil thick polycarbonate with a hardened coating so they won't fade and go yellow like old plastic headlights do. They also offer great protection so a stray rock flying up from the tracks won't smash your lights. Look for these things and you'll end up with a great set of lights. Myth 5. You need an auto sparky to install driving lights. Should you install your own spotlights? If the thought of 12 volt really daunts you, then probably not. Maybe get a professional auto spark to do the job for you. But I guess technology has come so far these days and companies like Steady have made it really easy for you to do it yourself. Now they usually include what they call this wiring harness. Now it's plug and play. It literally plugs into your spotties. The relay's already included. It's got a switch. Now the trickiest bit of installing lights is normally getting the trigger feed from your high beam. They've made that really easy because you can actually get a piggyback for your specific model of vehicle. So say you've got a 200, one that plugs into where your headlights go, it piggybacks straight into here, and that'll take the, the trigger straight off your high beam. So it's all legal and really easy to install. The other big question is, and that's where things start to get a little bit difficult, to try and keep things neat if you're trying to run wires up to your roof. So say you want to put spotlights on your roof, or maybe a roof light, but check this out. It's a really neat product, it's by Steady. It's called Wiring Concealer. Now it's very inexpensive. Now I'll shut this and show you what I've done. I actually wired these up myself. This concealer will actually conceal your wires, so it hides them and keeps it really neat. So I've got all the wiring I need to go to my light bar straight up here. And looking at the vehicle, you really can't tell there's wiring in there. Makes the job so much easier, not to mention a heck of a lot neater. Well, there you go. Everything you need to know about spotlights for your rig. So hopefully by now in this video, you've learned all the technical information you need to know to be able to pick a good set of lights from a poor set. At the end of the day, when you're forking over your hard earned, you need to know you're spending your money well, and hopefully we've helped you with that decision. Plus, you'll know a stack about light so you'll be able to school your mate next time you're down at the pub. Anyway, if you've got any more questions, make sure you chuck them in the comments below. I'll be keen to go through those and hopefully answer any questions you might still have. Well, that's all we've got time for. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. I'll see you next time on Four Wheel Drive 24-7.